I became a visual artist at the ripe age of 14. I went to art school and then I got my MFA at grad school and then I made a lot of artwork and built my portfolio and worked on my resume and got some exhibits and some grants and some teaching jobs. And that whole time, I also waited tables because my full-time job as an artist did not fully support me. This is a story I see happen over and over and over again. A talented, dedicated artist makes amazing work and then struggles desperately financially. That artist yearns for a gallery to swoop in and save the day, and that gallery does not appear. The artist begins to suffer crippling doubt, not to mention economic stress. Being financially insecure is not a recipe for creative freedom, and ultimately, the artist's art suffers as well. Is there a better system? I say yes, and today on The Josie Show, I'm gonna share my backstory of how I built a million dollar art studio and changed the story. Welcome to The Josie Show, where it's artist to artist chat about making great art and making the cash money, because I think artists should get paid. It's the artists that are the conduits of expressing the deep, essential human truths. It's the makers and the musicians and the writers that bring dimension to all of our lives. I would like those people to be financially secure so they don't continue to struggle and that the beautiful work they are called to bring into the world can be birthed. To that end, I wrote the ultimate guide to selling your art online, a free worksheet that breaks down the basic steps you'll need to build a creative business selling your art. You can get it at josielewis.com slash ultimate. There is a crippling societal myth that artists are poor. There is a myth that being an artist is not practical or sustainable. And though I agree that most artists have a different risk tolerance than most people. I do not agree that artists must toil in poverty. 30 years ago, I grant you, the picture might have been different for artists. There were very few ways to make a living as an artist. You could become a designer or illustrator working for a company, or if you were networked enough, you could be a freelancer. You could get represented by an art gallery that could possibly consistently sell your work. You could become an art teacher or a professor and at least be paid to work in your field and with your chosen passion. But now it's different. Now there's this little thing called the internet. About seven years ago, I had all but quit being an artist. I knew I was creative and I enjoyed making art, but the slog of the real world art career climbing, grants and galleries and teaching had stopped being appealing. It just wasn't working for me and I didn't see it working for most artists. Some people did and do succeed in this arena and I'm delighted it works for them, but the odds were iffy and boy, I was tired. So in my heart, I gave up the idea of being a successful artist, financially or not, and instead I started making art process videos for fun on the internet to my 247 Instagram followers. This was strictly a hobby, a lark, a fanciful experiment, but the video started to go viral and I started getting more serious. It took a while, a good while, like three years to figure out how to monetize my social media growth into a successful art studio, but I did figure it out. The internet has eliminated a tremendous amount of barriers. Now artists can connect directly with fans and collectors. A few other things have happened as well. Amazon normalized buying stuff online. Etsy normalized buying stuff from individual creators. Shipping services are incredible and reliable and efficient. I just sent some art to Japan from Minnesota and it arrived in four days in perfect shape. 
Payment services are safe and reliable to transfer money from buyer to seller in mere seconds. Building a personal commerce website is pretty much just plug and play. And social media literally connects artists to pretty much every human being on the planet. There is no need for a third party like an art gallery. There might be a need for a side job, but we're in the age of a gig culture. There's no shame in waiting tables. I did it for 15 years. It was great. Usually a full-time art studio that makes sustainable revenue does not happen in one year or overnight. It's a process of building and growing over time, just like any business. The problem I see with a lot of artists is that they are still stuck in the 90s, thinking that the galleries are the only way to create the income they desire. I actually love galleries and I show in galleries, but they are only one piece of my diversified income streams. Many artists still deeply believe the myth that artists can't make money and the thought of applying a few small business principles to their art practice is very alien. But the fact is the very basics of small business know-how around sales and marketing can change everything. I know a lot of artists can be purists and the M word marketing and the S word sales literally turns their stomach. But consider it this way, my friend, marketing your art is simply a way for you to allow more people to see it. So some people might want to buy it. Yay. Every time you participate in a public exhibit or a show in a gallery or post your work online, you are marketing your work. So let's be deliberate and strategic about how we do our marketing and use all of the available channels to us and do it in a way that is authentic to our story and to our work. Though my production art studio is still a full-time job and I have a team now of several employees that help me make it happen, I also love artists and I wanna support them. I wanna help artists and creatives push past these limiting beliefs and make the money. That's why I publish a vlog on various art business topics every week and I have a private membership called Art Revenue Coaching where I help hundreds of artists with training, with community, and live coaching calls to learn how to monetize their work. The doors are currently closed, but they are opening again soon. So I invite you to check out josielewis.com slash ARC, that's A-R-C, to see what it's all about and put your name on the waiting list. Now it's your turn. Have you identified limiting beliefs that keep you stuck as a creative? What are they? How will you flip the script and take action in building your creative career? Let me know in the comments.